most welcome to the third video of my lecture series on introduction to complex analysis as promised in the last video i will discuss how you can visualize complex numbers in a complex plane using polar form mainly in this video if you have not seen the last video yet the link is in the description below so without wasting time let's start in our last video, we discussed about the famous Euler's formula, which you can see on screen now. In this video, we will see how Euler's formula opens a whole new avenue for visualizing complex numbers. According to Euler's formula, as you can see here, e to the power i x is equal to cosine x plus i sin x. So according to Euler's formula, we know e to the power i x is equal to cosine x cos x plus i into sin x. Now since sine and cosine are 2 pi periodic functions, they are periodic functions with period 2 pi, we can simply write e to the power i into x plus twice pi is equal to what will be that cos x plus twice pi plus i sine x plus twice pi now cos x plus twice pi since they are two pi periodic function that is cos x plus i sin x plus 2 pi that is again sin x so i sin x that means cos x plus i sin x is what again e to the power i x so e to the power i into x plus 2 pi is again e to the power i x okay fine let us see what is e to the power i into x plus 4 pi similarly this can be written as cos x plus 4 pi plus i into sine x plus 4 pi and that will be equal to cos x plus 4 pi that is again cos x plus i sine x plus 4 pi again i sine x so that means again e to the power i x therefore we can write a few properties or say a few observations from this particular calculations what we have done now i'm writing observations observations from euler's formula what are our observations so first one is we can write e to the power i x e to the power i x is equal to e to the power i into x plus twice pi as we have seen that will be same as e to the power i into x plus 4 pi and that will be equal to in this way if we continue that will be equal to e to the power i into x plus twice k pi what is k this k is an integer is any integer this k may be a positive integer this k may be a negative integer and this property is simply because the sin x and cosine x both are two pi periodic function and this leads to another observation that e to the power if if we have e to the power i theta is equal to e to the power i phi if we have this then this implies then this implies what theta is equal to phi plus twice k pi where this k belongs to 
z k is an integer now you can simply derive this by considering or i can say you just consider in the previous formula you just consider phi equal to x and theta equal to x plus twice k pi if you simply consider this in the previous formula that means i am saying consider this as phi and consider this expression as theta if you consider this two you can see that e to the power i theta is equal to e to the power i phi and that means your theta is phi plus twice k phi so this is a simple observation from the previous result now <clears throat> Uh, if we if we consider if we consider uh, the particular some particular value of this x in this formula, we know that e to the power i x e to the power i x is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. So for some particular values of x, we will get certain uh, very important values of this exponential function. For example, we can write e to the power i into pi by 2. Can you tell me what will be that? That will be cos pi by 2 plus i sin pi by 2. So cos pi by 2 is 0 and sin pi by 2 is 1. So that means it will give us i. Similarly, if we consider e to the power i into pi, what will be e to the power i into pi? Cos pi plus i into sin pi. Now sin pi is 0, cos pi is minus 1. So this will be minus 1. Now the most important and which we use a lot of times, e to the power twice pi into i. That means this will be cos 2 pi plus i sin 2 pi. Again sin 2 pi is 0, cos 2 pi is 1. So this value will be 1. So these are certain values of the exponential function which you will see that will be extremely important and we will use them further in our future works also. Next, if I consider, if I consider mod of e to the power i theta, can you tell me what will be this value? This will be equal to mod of cos theta plus i sin theta that is equal to square root of cos square theta plus sin square theta that is equal to square root of 1 that means 1. So mod of or uh, e to the power i theta or the absolute value of e to the power i theta is equal to 1 as per our formula or definition of modulus because we know as per the definition of modulus we know mod of x plus i y is equal to squared root of square root of x square plus y square so by that particular definition we get mod of e to the power i theta is equal to 1 now i i i would advise you all to remember this uh, formula as they are very useful for solving problems. Now, let us consider, uh, let us consider a complex number z equals to x plus i y. We have seen in our last video that this can be plotted as, this is our real axis. This is our imaginary axis. Now, if this point, so this is my, say, consider this is my z equals to x plus i y. Let us consider this as my z equals to x plus i y. And uh, mm, uh, the absolute value of z, I can write mod z, that will be equal to, as per the definition, this length will be square root of x square plus y square. Fine. Now, let us consider that this angle, let us consider 
that this angle is theta. Let us consider this angle is theta. Now, uh, since it is x plus i y, uh, we know that this length will be x and this length will be y. So now, if we consider this angle to be theta, then from this right angle triangle, we can say that our x is equal to, say this is mod z, x will be mod z cos theta because x by mod z will be cos theta. Now let us consider, uh, uh, let us give it a name. Let us this mod z equals to r. Okay, so that means now we can uh, say from this right angle triangle, x equal to r cos theta, x equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. Pretty simple observation from this right angle triangle. Y, bar, uh, y by r will be equal to sin theta. And we can further write that this r is actually as it is written square root of x square plus y square. And this theta is equal to actually tan theta will be y by x. So theta will be tan inverse y by x. So this is my tan theta. Now, considering everything, if we plug in all these values in z, therefore, what do we get? Therefore, z becomes equals to r into cos theta plus i r sin theta. So, that means this can be written as r into cos theta plus i sin theta. Now, from this point, we get, we, we get to understand the brilliance of Euler's formula. And you will see how this will help us in visualizing complex numbers. This can simply be written as r e to the power i theta as per Euler's formula. Therefore, we get another representation of z. We know that z is equal to x plus i y one representation and now we have got that this alternatively implies z equals to r e to the power i theta. What is r and what is theta is written uh, here clearly. We can look in the diagram. Now this particular form is known as the polar form. This particular is known as the polar form or polar representation of z. And you will see this will be tremendously helpful for us. Now, note that if we if you look at this diagram carefully, if you look at this diagram carefully, for a particular z, for a particular z in this context, here it is z, for a particular z, r is fixed or r is unique, but theta is not. I mean to say, for any particular complex number z, r will always be unique. You will have, you will get only one value of r. But due to the periodicity of sine and cosine, you may get different values of theta. For example, if we write, if you, if you remember the previous set of formula, for example, whatever is written over here, this e to the power i x equal to, to the power i x plus 2 pi equal to, to the power i x plus 4 pi. If you, uh, if you note this formula, then as an example, we can write z equals to r e to the power i theta. That can again alternatively be written as equal to r e to the power i into theta plus twice pi. That can alternatively be written as r e to the power i into theta plus 4 pi in particular or, or it can be written in general as r e to the power i into theta plus twice 
k pi that means the angle that is represented by theta for a particular complex number z so for this complex number z the angle theta that we are referring here can be uh, uh, this means this angle theta can be theta plus 2 pi also that will also represent the same z can be theta plus 4 pi also can be theta plus 2 k pi also but this remember this k this k this k is an integer that means this k can be negative also that means this theta we will get the same complex number for theta for theta plus 2 pi theta minus 2 pi theta plus 4 pi theta minus 4 pi so that means theta is not unique we can get the same complex number for different values of theta you can just plot and you can check theta plus 4 pi if I consider theta plus 4 pi will again come back to the same place theta plus 4 pi will again come back to the same place theta minus 2 pi theta minus 2 pi will be this because 2 pi minus theta will be will be the equal angle in the other side so this will be 2 pi minus theta if I consider this angle now minus of 2 pi minus theta that means theta minus 2 pi that will be uh, uh, the, uh, on the other side so you will get get back to the same place so for a particular one particular complex number theta is not unique although r is unique therefore for a particular complex number z how we can understand which particular theta we are talking about that means for a particular complex number z although r is fixed but since the angle can be theta theta plus 2 pi theta minus 2 pi theta plus 4 pi theta minus 4 pi etc this may lead to a confusion about which theta we are referring to in a particular context to avoid this we will use some terminology what are the terminologies the principal argument the principal argument the principal argument the principal argument which is denoted by arg z is that value of theta for which or is that value of theta which is greater than minus pi and less than or equal to plus pi that means if you write in particular notation this will be that value of theta such that z equals to r e to the power i theta and this theta lies between minus pi to plus pi look at the sign here this minus pi is less than and this plus pi is less or equal to that means it will be higher than minus pi and it will be lesser than or equal to plus pi so one particular theta which satisfies this condition will be known as a principal argument all other permissible thetas because we know there can be more than one theta as we discussed all other permissible thetas are known as argument means argument only and we therefore that can be written as if you carefully observe the uh, uh, if you carefully understand the discussion that y theta is not unique so it is clear that this can be written as the principal argument plus twice k pi because the uh, different angles will be theta plus twice k pi as written above twice k pi where this k is an integer now remember or note very carefully that in principal argument this is capital a we are using and in argument 
simply argument we are using small a here so these are the two basic difference when we will be denoting so in a particular context depending on what we are writing we will get to know that what we are actually which angle theta we are meaning about now let us see some uh, some examples uh, first one uh, let us try to find out what will be the argument of say i uh, we all know that if we plot if we plot suppose this is my real axis this is my imaginary axis so can you tell me where i will lie yes i will lie on this axis say so this is i so if this is i then clearly theta is the angle that this particular r and and what is r here r will be this particular length on the imaginary axis this will be my r on the imaginary axis this is my r so what is theta again just quickly look at this uh, uh, diagram what is theta theta is the angle that this r makes with the positive real axis so uh, uh, even we can we can associate a direction also to this theta we can associate a direction also to this theta means we are measuring theta in this way we we know that when we measure an angle counter clockwise we take the positive sign and when we measure it clockwise we take the negative sign so uh, in this context and the general convention is when we will be talking about principal argument we need to take care that the argument should if we if it is a principal argument that the value of theta should lie between minus pi and plus pi so in this case uh, the angle is this and what is the angle what is its value its value is pi by 2 so argument of i is equal to pi by 2 Similarly, uh, can you tell me what will be the argument of say one? Now, where one lies, one will lie on the real axis totally. So this is a place maybe where one lies. That means this is my r, and what is the angle this that this r makes with the positive real axis? We yeah, are pretty simple. It is zero. And remember, all we are talking about uh, uh, principal argument because capital A I have written. So zero. Now pi by two also satisfies the condition for being the principal argument because it is lying in the range. One is also zero also satisfying this uh, 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 condition. It is also lying in the range. So argument of one is equal to zero. Next, uh, can you tell me what will be the argument of say? Minus one. So minus one will lie again in some place like this. So this say so this is minus one. Now what will be the angle? The angle will be like this because this will be my radial vector. The angle will be like this. Now you see uh, this will be the angle is pi. So here the principal argument is again pi now if i consider say another example say i'm trying to find out argument of minus i so minus i where minus i will lie minus i will lie uh, somehow somehow like this so this would be my minus i now uh, here we need to be more cautious now if we consider this angle if we consider this particular angle so you can understand that here actually this will be my r so the angle that it makes with the positive axis in this way if i consider in this way in the counter clockwise uh, direction it exceeds pi so this cannot be my principal argument because to become the principal argument this condition needs to be satisfied which is not being satisfied here so this exceeds pi this cannot be my principal argument so what do we have to have to do we cannot measure this angle counterclockwise we need to measure this angle clockwise so now this now if we measure this angle clockwise what is the value of this angle 
minus pi by 2 because we are measuring clockwise. So this is minus pi by 2. Now here the argument will be minus pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 is higher than minus pi. So it's, it is in the range and satisfying my requirement. So the argument, principal argument here will be minus pi by 2. Remember all these arguments are principal arguments. Now again, let us find out the principal argument of another number, say 1 minus i. Let me use a different color. Too many yellow colors are there. So let me use a different color here. So now 1 minus i. So this is minus i. This is 1. So 1 minus i will be, will be somewhere like this. This may be 1 minus 1. I, sorry, 1 minus i. So say this is z equals to 1 minus i. Again, the same problem. If you measure this angle counterclockwise, the problem is this angle will be higher than pi. So we cannot measure in this way. So what will be the angle? The angle will be actually this. We have to measure in this way if we are calculating the principal argument. We cannot measure in this way because this is not fitting the definition of principal argument. So we need to measure the angle in this way. And if we measure this angle in this way, what is the value of this angle? It is minus pi by 4. Now to find this angle, you can use the formula also because we know that as per our formula, what is the, uh, uh, from that right angle triangle, what you can say, theta equal to tan inverse y by x. Now here, that means in this particular case, my x is equal to 1 and my y is equal to minus 1, x plus i, y, if we compare the form with x plus i, y, x is 1, y is minus 1. Therefore, theta is equal to tan inverse minus 1 divided by 1. So that means tan inverse minus 1. So that is equal to minus tan inverse 1. So that means minus pi by 4. So you can find the angle in this way also. So this is how we can find out principal arguments for a particular complex number. I hope it is clear to you. Now, uh, let us see some more examples. Let us see uh, how we can find out or we can plot simple regions simple regions in a complex plane. Suppose that we want to plot, suppose that we want to plot, say we want to plot, say we want to plot uh, a region R, which is say equal to Z belong to C, such that uh, mod of z minus 1 less than mod z. Let us say how we can plot this particular region. Now let us have a quick recollection what we mean by mod z. What is the, what is the meaning of mod z? So we know that mod z, okay, if z equals to x plus i y, then mod z equals to x square root of x square plus y square. This is all we know and we have discussed earlier also. So mod z equals to this. Now let us see how we can we can we can visualize this region or how we can plot this region. Fine. Uh, so to do that, first let us consider or explore this condition a bit. Let us explore this condition a bit. So mod of z minus 1 less than mod z. This implies if z equals to x plus i y, this implies mod of x plus i y minus 1 less than mod of x plus i y, which implies mod of x minus 1 plus i into y less than mod of x plus i y. 
Now, as per the definition of mod modulus written above, what you can write? We can write that this implies square root of x minus 1 whole square plus y square less than square root of x square plus y square which implies x minus 1 whole square plus y square less than x square plus y square. Now, since both of them are positive and we can cancel them from both the sides, therefore, this gives us x square minus 2x plus 1 is less than x square again these two cancels out so this implies 2x minus 2x plus 1 less than 0 which again implies in turn x is greater than half so if we simply explore the definition of mod we get x is greater than half now we can very easily plot x is greater than half what is what is x greater than half which region is x greater than half so basically uh, this set corresponds to the region x greater than half remember the sign is greater than x greater than half so let us plot the region very easily we can plot the region so let us consider this is my real axis this is my imaginary axis and if we consider say this is my half say this is one say this is three by two say this is two say this is five by two and in this way we can write here also say half again remember i can write either half or i can write half i the meaning is same because we are plotting everything in the imaginary axis so say this is 1, again this is 3 by 2. In this way, suppose this is my axis system. So we need to find out the region where x will be greater than half. Okay, sorry, don't, uh, don't uh, consider this greater or equal to. I, have, I had marked that for a different reason. I had marked that to indicate that the sign is only greater than. So I, it will be easier to understand if I write in this way. So, x is greater than half. Fine. Now, we need to find out that region which is greater than half. So, fine. What will be that region? To find that, let us find out what is x equal to half. So, pretty simple, x equal to half will be uh, this straight line passing through x equal to half. Therefore, the region x greater than half will be, uh, uh, can be found very easily this will be my region this will be my region the entire right side of this line x equal to half entire right side of this line x equal to half so my region will basically be like this so this will be my region so the region is this remember the boundary x equal to half is not contained in this region that's why i have i have plotted this with the yellow dotted line so this is your region okay so this is my region x greater than half and that means this is the region which we can say correspond to our 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 set that we were trying to find out and what was our set let us quickly check what was our set mod z minus one less than z so i can write now that this is my region mod z minus one less than mod z so this this is how we can find out our region uh, let us consider another example. 
Let us consider, say this is one. Let us consider a region. Let us consider that we have to plot, we have to plot this particular region, say R prime, since I have denoted the earlier one by R. R prime equal to, say Z belongs to C minus zero. Z belongs to C minus zero, such that zero less than argument Z, less than, say, pi by four, less than pi by four. Suppose this is my region. Uh, now, argument Z. So this is the argument. So uh, simple argument. So let us uh, as, uh, quickly look at a definition of argument. So the definition of argument is this as it is written. Oh, I missed one thing which is obvious. I should write here Z should not be equal to zero because then it makes no sense if you uh, uh, put Z equals to zero. This plus two K pi makes no sense at all. So this is Z not equals to zero. Fine. So argument of Z, the definition is this. Okay, let us try to find out. And this is how we can plot a complex number or a region based on argument. Fine. Now, uh, let us see first, let us see. Uh, okay, okay. So say, sorry. So say this is my, this is my access system. Real access. This is the imaginary access. Fine. Now let us see first, which uh, 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 region corresponds to argument Z equals to zero. Now clearly, argument equals to Z equals to zero is given by this entire real axis. So throughout this real axis, argument Z will be equal to zero. Okay. Argument Z equals to pi by four. So maybe if I just bisect this angle. So throughout this particular uh, uh, line, argument Z equals to pi by four. So this represents your argument Z equals to zero. This represents your argument Z equals to pi by four. Now look at the sign here. This sign is less than, this sign is less than, and this sign is also, if you look at this sign, this sign is also less than. Okay, so both the signs are less than. So that means the region will be the region which is bounded by these two uh, straight lines, excluding these two straight lines. Means the region within these two straight lines. That means what I'm trying to say, the region will be nothing but this particular region. Remember, these two straight lines or the boundaries not are, in, are not included. That's why I have plotted them using different color and dotted lines to indicate that they are not included. So this is my region of interest. So that means this is the region where zero. So this is the region where zero is less than argument Z less than pi by four. So this is my region, zero less than, and it spans uh, 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 in the entire, entire this side, in the entire this particular side, if I plot in this way. This region spans in this entire side. So this is my region, zero less than argument set less than pi by four. So this is how we can plot uh, uh, regions in a complex plane, depending on their arguments. Now we have seen that a complex number z equals to x plus i y can be represented as z equals to r e to the power i theta. A complex number z equals to x plus i y, sorry, a complex number z equals to x plus i y can be represented as z equals to r e to the power i theta also in polar form. Just think, just think, if R is fixed, if R is fixed, let me plot again. 
if r is fixed just think say this is sorry say this is my say this is my access system real access the imaginary access say this is my r this is my r sorry uh, sorry let me write r here say this is my r and uh, say this is okay fine i'm not writing anything else say this is my r now if r is fixed can you think what will be the locus of z say this point is z if r is fixed what will be the locus of this z that means if only theta varies with r having same value what will be the locus of z that means i am asking what will be those complex numbers for which r is fixed only theta is different yes the answer is pretty simple the locus will be all such complex numbers for which r is same but theta will be different that means the locus will be the locus will be a circle the locus will be a circle of radius r the locus will be a circle of radius r so we can say that the locus will be a circle of radius r that means this particular expression z equals to r e to the power i theta when r is fixed when r is fixed represents when r is fixed represents a circle with radius r nothing else that's why sometimes we say this r as the radial vector we refer this r as the radial or radius vector and this r represents and this z equals to r e to the power i theta this equation represents a circle of radius r is that clear because only on all in in here in each of this z in each of this z which is present here in each of this z which are present over here in each of this z your r is having same value but theta is different here the thing is written like this now uh, for example for example if we consider some example a few examples say a uh, say for example say example say z equals to r okay 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 let us fix r let us fix r say r is 1 that means z equals to e to the power i theta say r is 1 that is z equals to e to the power i theta that means z equals to e to the power i theta will represent a circle of radius 1 a circle of radius 1 say here the radius is say maybe this r here is 1 a circle of radius 1 now if we change this if we consider another one say z equals to e to the power 2 e to the power i theta what will be that very simple that will be a circle of radius 2 that means a bigger circle than this one so the thing can be considered in this way pardon my poor drawing skills i'm intending to draw circles but they are turning out to be i don't know what so here again i can consider that this radius so this radius is actually 2 that means r equals to 2 e to the power i theta will represent a circle of radius 2 just a minute let me extend this axis a bit otherwise this looks very odd actually it looks odd because the diagrams are pathetic so anyway uh, this is my 2e to the power i theta if i consider z equals to half e to the power i theta what will be z equals to half e to the power i theta that will be a circle of radius half that means even a smaller circle 
maybe maybe something like this so maybe here this radius if we consider maybe this radius is equal to half so in this way we can understand that how uh, uh, depending on this particular expression how we can we can get different curves that means for a, for any value of theta z equals to to the power i theta will represent a point on this circle of radius 1 for any value of theta z equals to 2e to the power i theta will represent any point in the yellow circle for z equals to half e to the power i theta for any value of theta z will be a point on this pink circle so uh, this is how we can and and we can look at the points also now it it triggers me to tell you one thing to have another observation which may be very interesting see if we consider say for example say if 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 z equals to e to the power i theta let us see what will be z square z cube z to the power 4 etc let us see what will be this let us see now so z equals to e to the power i theta what will be that z equals to e to the power i theta z equals to e to the power i theta will be circle of radius 1 z equals to e to the power i theta will be a circle of radius 1 fine let us suppose for a particular theta z is this so this angle is theta and this is my z for a particular theta now let us see what will be z square so z equals to e to the power i theta that means z square will be e to the power i theta whole square that means equal to e to the power i into 2 theta okay that means z square if we plot it that means z square if we plot it z square will be on a circle whose radius is still 1 because means on the same circle because here also 1 is multiplied with e to the power i into 2 theta but the angle will change the angle will now become 2 theta so 2 theta may be an angle like this this angle may be 2 theta if this angle is 2 theta so this is your this point is your z this point will be your z square now if we find out now z cube z cube what will be z cube z cube will be e to the power i theta whole cube that is equal to e to the power i into 3 theta so again uh, uh, this will be this will be plotted on the same circle because here also the radius is 1 but the angle is now 3 theta now an angle 3 theta will be something like this say this angle is 3 theta say if this angle is 3 theta say if this angle is 3 theta so that means this is my this is my z cube so this is z this is z square this is z cube similarly now we don't need to plot anything we don't need to do any uh, mean, means we need don't need to do any calculation we know z to the power 4 will be at an angle z to the power 4 will be at an angle z to the power 4 will be at an angle 4 theta i know further that z to the power 5 will be at an angle maybe something like this i don't know maybe maybe something like this this will be z to the power 5 so at an angle 5 theta so this is how we can plot and this is how we can plot uh, a z square z cube z to the power 4 and we can find out their locations very easily if z equals to e to the power i theta now the scenario will totally change and uh, uh, that means all are lying on the same circle now the scenario will totally change if we consider now say let z equals to uh, say 2e to the power i theta so z equals to 2e to the power i theta means it will be a circle z will lie on a circle say of radius sorry 
say of radius 2 i find it very difficult to draw circle in this system means actually my drawing skills are very poor i should admit that without blaming this setup so uh, say this is this is r equals to 2 the radius is 2 so z will be a point on this uh, particular circle for example let us consider uh, this this is my let us consider this is okay fine let us consider this is my z and this is my theta fine so now if we calculate z square we all know that in this case z square will be equal to 4 e to the power i into 2 theta now two changes first of all the radius gets changed to 4 and the angle also gets changed to 2 theta that means this z square will now not lie on this circle it will lie even on a bigger circle whose radius will be this will even now lie on a bigger circle whose radius will be 4 whose radius will be 4 so there are changes from two aspects one the radius and the angle both are changing so now radius will be 4 maybe this is looking like a chapati that i can make <laughs> pathetic circle anyway try to understand the concept so again here this radius is 4 let us consider and the angle will be 2 theta so if this angle is theta this angle if i consider this angle to be 2 theta say this is 2 theta so that means now this is your z so z square so earlier this was your z now this is your z square so if z equals to 2e to the power i theta then unlike the previous case we cannot say that all powers of z will also lie on the same circle that is getting changed here uh, the circle will be bigger if we consider other power z cube etc the, uh, the, they will lie on 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 another circles of of bigger radius similarly if we consider z equals to half e to the power i theta then you can consider z square will lie on a smaller circle than that so it is depending on what is your r that where the point lies now this again i'm giving you a food for thought just think if we vary both r and theta in z equals to r e to the power i theta that is i'm considering the whole complex plane now i'm varying both r and theta in z equals to r e to the power i theta remember i'm considering the whole complex plane now can you tell me from this perspective how the whole complex plane that means z equals to r e to the power i theta when both r and theta varies will look like the question is from this perspective try to think try to imagine try to visualize how the whole complex plane will look like let me know what you have thought what you have visualized in the comment section below i'll be waiting for your answer now uh, let us see how we can visualize addition and multiplication of complex numbers from where we started the discussion from where we started the entire discussion uh, or we, we started while well, we defined complex numbers for example let us consider that uh, there is a complex number say mm, mm, z equals to z equals to there is a complex number say z equals to x1 say z1 equals to x1 plus i into y1 and another complex number z2 equals to x2 plus i into y2 and in uh, if we write them in polar form then i can write z1 equals to r1 e to the power i into theta 1 and z2 equals to r2 e to the power i into theta 2 let us consider these two forms now i am calling uh, we we say popularly it is referred as this form is known as cartesian form 
Cartesian form and this form is known as polar form. You all know that this is known as the polar form. Let us see how we can visualize addition and multiplication of complex numbers. The basic operations. Fine. Here, Z1 plus Z2 that will be equal to x1 plus x2. It's pretty simple. Just separate the, the real and the imaginary parts plus i into y1 plus y2. Okay, fine. Let us plot the whole scenario. Let us plot the whole scenario. So, this is my z1 plus z2. Now, let us plot the whole scenario. Say, mm, this is my, say this is the real axis. This is the imaginary axis. This is my z1 equals to x1 plus i y1 so that means this length is my x1 and uh, maybe this length is my y1 and further let us consider this as my z2 equals to x2 plus i y2 so this length is my x2 and this length is my y2 Fine. Now, as for the uh, uh, addition formula, we have got Z1 plus Z2 will be at X1 plus X2 plus Y1 plus Y2. That means we need to find out the points X1 plus X2 and Y1 plus Y2. Okay. Pretty simple. X1 plus X2. This length is X1. This length is X2. So, X1 plus X2. Let us add X2 with this. So, this will be my. Okay. Let me change the color. So this one will be my x1 plus x2, something like this, just a rough estimation. And uh, y1 plus y2, I need to extend this axis a bit further. So if I consider, if I ex extend this axis a bit further, uh, let me extend this axis truly. So let us consider this is my imaginary axis. So y1 plus y2, this is y2, y1 plus y2 will be somewhere like this. Maybe just a rough estimation. Y1 plus Y2 will lie somewhere like this. So this is Y1 plus Y2. Therefore, X1 plus X2, Y1 plus Y2 will be a point. Will be a point. Sorry. I'm going further. Will be a point somewhere like this. So this is my Z equals to X1 plus X2, comma, plus I into Y1 plus Y2. I can write it in ordered pair notation also, which I was intending first. So this is my Z. We have got it. Now, if you observe carefully, this can be uh, 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 plotted in a very easy way. If I connect these two, if I connect these two, what do you got? We got a parallelogram. And geometrically, this corresponds to vector addition using parallelogram law. Pretty simple. That means this will be my length here, r. So this will be my r or mod z. So that means this corresponds to the uh, to the vector addition which we have, which we are familiar. So uh, graphically, at least graphically, at least this corresponds to the vector addition which we are already familiar with using the parallelogram law. So, to visualize addition, we can simply use the parallelogram law. The parallelogram law of vector addition. So, adding complex numbers. So, how you can visualize the addition of complex numbers, we got a nice visualization of vector addition using parallelogram law as a visualization of adding complex numbers. Now let us think about how we can visualize multiplication. Now with this form of visualization, with this Cartesian form of visualization, it will be difficult 
uh, uh, visualizing the multiplication. Just write the expression uh, of multiplication. You will understand why I am saying this. This will not. Be, this cannot be visualized in in such simple way. To visualize multiplication, let us use the polar forms. So, in polar form, we can now write that. In polar form, we can now write. We can now write that z1 into z2 will be equal to r1 e to the power i theta1 into r2 e to the power i theta2. So that means r1 r2 r1 into r2 e to the power i into theta1 plus theta2 if we multiply the two. Can you tell me what will be represented by this particular equation z1 into z2 equals to this? What will be represented by this particular equation? Yes. This particular represent, equation represents a circle with a radius r1 into r2. But this particular complex number z1 into z2 is situated on that particular circle of radius r1 and r2 with angle theta1 plus theta2. In general, z equal to r1 into r2 i theta1 plus theta2 will represent a circle of radius r1 into r2. And this particular complex number which we are going to get as a product will be that particular complex number which is located on a circle of radius r1 into r2 and angle theta1 plus theta2. So if we plot, if we try to have a visualization, actually it is difficult to get visualization unless we have the form of Z1 and Z2 explicitly. Means unless we know what is R1, theta1, R2, theta2. But but as a, as a rough idea, what we can say? Say for example, this represents a circle of radius R1. Say uh, this is, uh, this is say R1. This is say, okay, okay sorry, sorry. Say this is my R1. Say this represents this particular complex number represents Z1 equals to R1 e to the power I into theta1. Say this is my Z1. Now uh, 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 let us consider that uh, R2 e to the power I theta2. So that will be on the circle of radius R2. Let us suppose hypothetically that this is my circle of radius r2 so so um, say and uh, say uh, this angle is theta 2 uh, theta 2 is so this is my so this is my z equals to r2 e to the power i theta 2 that means uh, this radius is r2 and this angle is theta 2 this radius is r2 and this angle is theta2 and in the previous case this radius is r1 and this angle if we consider is theta1 so these are my two two points now z equals to r1 into r2 e to the power i theta that will be a circle of radius r1 into r2 or in other words z1 into z2 equals to r1 r2 e to the power i theta plus 1 plus theta 2 will lie on a circle of radius r1 into, into r2. Now exactly how that circle will look like that will depend on what is the value of r1 r and r2 exactly unless we know that we cannot draw the circle. For the sake of argument let us consider that the circle somewhat looks like this. Somewhat the circle looks like this. Let me extend the axis a bit. Already the drawing is pathetic, but still let me extend the axis so that we feel good. <laughs> so this is suppose uh, my circle uh, this. So here I I mean to say that uh, say uh, for example maybe the radius is r and say this angle is theta 1 plus theta 2. Say this angle is theta 1 plus theta 2. This is our origin. The origin. Say that means I am meaning that uh, this is my 
this is my r1 into r2 maybe the radius the angle that we are getting here this angle say this angle is theta 1 plus theta 2 and this complex number say this complex number is my z1 into z2 so this complex number is my z1 into z2 so maybe i don't know this 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 might be might not be the circle for your choice of r1 and r2 for maybe some choice of r1 and r2 this will be a circle and and the thing r1 into r2 can uh, z1 into z2 can be plotted in this way so uh, uh, what do you have seen what do you have seen that is this is your uh, this is in this case this is my z1 this is my z2 sorry i missed a thing i should write here i should write here z2 i should write here z2 so this is my z2 and this is my z1 into z2 so you can see that uh, this can be this is how we can visualize product or multiplication of uh, uh, a complex number so uh, we got two ways actually if i summarize we got two ways if you have to visualize addition if you want to visualize addition you try to visualize in the cartesian form from the perspective of parallelogram law and if you try to visualize multiplication if you try to visualize multiplication if you try to visualize multiplication try to visualize in this way uh, by considering the polar form now to have a quick summary of what we have done in this session in this class we started with the Euler's formula we started with the Euler's formula we got some observations from Euler's formula then we talked about principal argument and argument of a complex number then you have plotted some complex numbers depending on their arguments or we have found out uh, arguments of some complex numbers and we have plotted some regions depending on their argument and uh, uh, the uh, the modulus value as given then we have tried to find out uh, how we can plot a complex number depending on its polar form and we got some nice visualizations and i have given you a food for thought don't forget me you tell me you have to tell me how the complex plane will look like if we can think it from the perspective of this polar form if we if we if we visualize this from the perspective of this polar form let me let me write this uh, uh, here let me write this here your food for thought food for thought food for thought is how the whole complex plane c will look like how the whole complex plane c will look like i really want to know this from you guys let me know this in the comment section your observations how c will look like fine so this is uh, we discussed and next we visualized the addition and multiplication of two complex numbers and we have got a nice visualization that if it is addition you can visualize as vector addition using parallelogram law which makes our job a bit simple and if it is a polar form even the thing is simpler we we can visualize multiplication if it, in in polar form where the result will lie on on a circle maybe of the same radius maybe of different radius and if the radius and the particular complex numbers are given we can plot them very easily so uh, this is all for uh, this video we have learned how to visualize complex numbers a region in a complex plane addition and multiplication of complex numbers i will not make this video longer because i'm sure you are now waiting for me to finish so that you can start exploring regions and points in complex plane do that and let me know your comments or doubts or anything you'd like to say in the comment section below 
In the next video, we will try to find out or we will try to locate and visualize roots of a complex number. See you in the next video.